For decades, the global tech landscape has been shaped by a belief. A belief that some technologies were simply out of reach for most of the world. That to build the most advanced microchips, you needed access to the most advanced tools. And those tools were controlled by a very small, very powerful circle of nations and corporations. This belief was not baseless. It was built on hard facts, hard numbers, and hard-won patents. It was reinforced by decades of industry leadership, by trillion-dollar companies, and by machines that looked more like science fiction than manufacturing equipment. The most symbolic of these machines was the EUV lithography system, Extreme Ultraviolet, a technological marvel developed by ASML, the Dutch firm that holds a monopoly on its production. These machines are the crown jewels of chip fabrication. Each one is the size of a bus, costs over 150 million, and contains mirrors polished to near atomic perfection. Only a few dozen exist in the world. With these machines, companies like TSMC, Samsung, and Intel were able to push silicon down to the 5 nanometer node, the 3 nanometer node, and beyond. Without them, it was believed, no, it was declared, that such progress was impossible. This belief became dogma. And China? Well, China wasn't supposed to be part of that conversation. It was said that without access to EUV, without a foothold in the most advanced semiconductor ecosystem, China would remain permanently behind. Stuck at 14 nm, maybe 10 nm at best. It didn't matter how much money China poured into chip design or manufacturing. Without EUV, the wall was too high. This belief shaped policy. It shaped supply chains. And it shaped a geopolitical strategy. The United States, supported by Japan and the Netherlands, moved to block China's access to critical semiconductor tools. They banned the sale of EUV equipment to Chinese firms. Then they expanded those restrictions to include DUV tools above a certain capability threshold. It wasn't just about ASML. It extended to American software companies like Synopsys, EDA firms, chip IP vendors like ARM, and equipment suppliers from around the world. The goal was clear. Slow down China's progress. Make it wait. Force it to rely on older technology until, perhaps, the gap grew too wide to ever bridge. This was the strategy. A small yard, tightly fenced. A containment plan, justified under national security, but deeply rooted in technological supremacy. And at first, it seemed to work. Huawei, one of China's crown jewels in tech innovation, was among the first to be hit. Its access to Google's Android OS was revoked. Its supply chain was fractured. The company was cut off from TSMC, where its high-end Kirin chips were manufactured. Without access to advanced foundries, it was assumed Huawei's smartphone business would collapse. For a while, sales dipped. Market share declined. Analysts called it the beginning of the end. But behind the scenes, something very different was happening. Huawei didn't disappear. It evolved. Stripped of its usual lifelines, it turned inward. It doubled down on R&D. It restructured its supply chains. It poured resources into Harmony OS, its alternative to Android. It partnered with domestic companies. It built new design teams. And it waited. SMIC. The Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation was also facing heat. As China's most advanced chip foundry, SMIC was barred from acquiring EUV machines. Many assumed it would cap out at 14 alum, that without EUV, it would fall behind year after year, eventually rendered irrelevant in the global semiconductor race. But like Huawei, SMIC had a different plan. Instead of focusing on what they didn't have, they focused on what they did. And what they had was DUV, deep ultraviolet lithography. Older, yes. Less precise, certainly. But not without potential. With DUV, you can't easily etch the ultra-fine patterns needed for chips at 7 nanometer or smaller. But there's a workaround, multi-patterning. It's a process where you essentially divide a single intricate pattern into multiple layers and etch them sequentially, aligning them with nanometer scale precision. It's slow. It's complicated. It's expensive. But it's not impossible. In 2023, something extraordinary happened. Without fanfare, without press releases, Huawei released the Mate 60 Pro, a sleek flagship smartphone with a chip inside called the Kirin 9000s. This chip wasn't supposed to exist. It was built by SM Makey. And when analysts decapped the chip and analyzed its architecture, they realized something stunning. This was a 7 nanometer processor. It was real. It was mass produced. It was in the hands of consumers. This one chip sent shockwaves through the tech world. How did Huawei and SMIC do it? Could it be sustained? Was it just a stunt? 
a single batch of chips for national pride? Or was it the beginning of something bigger? At the time, the consensus was cautious. Yes, they had pulled off seven N, but that was surely the limit. Five Nermi, let alone three of them, would require more masks, more layers, more patterning, more complexity. Yields would plummet. Costs would soar. It was seen as unsustainable. A clever trick. Not a long-term solution. But the story didn't end there. As 2024 progressed, rumors began to swirl. Quiet chatter in the supply chain. Unusual patterns in procurement orders. New hires at Huawei's chip design unit. A flurry of patents related to advanced packaging, chiplet architectures, and lithography alternatives. And then came the leaks. Reports that a new chip beyond seven mirrors was in production. Some said five nanami, some whispered three nanamis, and then the confirmation came. According to multiple industry analysts, supply chain trackers, and teardown reports, Huawei, together with SMIC, has now successfully mass-produced a three nanometer chip. Not a prototype, not a lab sample, but a working volume-produced chip, and they did it without EUV. This breakthrough challenges everything. It flips the entire premise of the West's semiconductor strategy on its head. Instead of being stuck behind, China has found a new path forward, a path defined not by the clean, high-yield efficiency of EUV, but by the messy, resilient, improvisational spirit of engineering under constraint, a path that takes DUV to its absolute limits. Layering stencils on top of stencils, overcoming alignment challenges, compensating with design optimizations, and squeezing performance from what others discarded. This 3 nanometer chip is not just about performance. It's about sovereignty. It's about national pride. It's about proving that when the door is shut, a window can still be built. And this isn't just about Huawei and SMIC. The implications ripple out across the Chinese tech ecosystem. Smartphone companies like Xiaomi, Oppo, and Vivo now have a potential domestic source of cutting-edge chips. Telecom giants, data centers, AI labs, all of them can now look to homegrown silicon for their most demanding applications. Meanwhile, Harmony OS, once seen as a fallback, is gaining traction. It's not just a stopgap anymore. It's becoming a real alternative. With the OS, the hardware, the chips, and the supply chain all aligning, China is rapidly assembling an independent tech stack, one that doesn't rely on Google, Qualcomm, Intel, or TSMC. This is not just technological progress. It's geopolitical movement. It's a rebalancing of power. For the West, this is a moment of reckoning. The sanctions, while impactful, have not stopped China's progress. They may have slowed it temporarily, but they also forced a kind of innovation born from urgency, a pressure cooker that yielded not collapse, but acceleration. The chip war is not over. In fact, it's entering a new phase, now, as the world eyes tune in the Miyarn, gate all around transistors, and the next frontier of quantum and neuromorphic computing, the rules are being rewritten. No longer can anyone assume dominance by default. Every player now understands that the game is changing, and fast. So the question is no longer whether China can catch up. It's what the world will do now that it has. And with that, I ask you, what do you think? Were you surprised by this breakthrough? Do you believe this will lead to a new era of tech independence? Or will it spark even greater geopolitical tension? And what other breakthroughs are you watching closely? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Your idea might shape the next chapter of this story. Thank you for being here. Subscribe if you haven't already. The future isn't written in stone. It's being printed, layer by microscopic layer, and the next revolution might already be in your pocket. We'll see you in the next one.